Hey, welcome back to Drowning in Yarn. I'm Caleb. I recently finished the Satellite Shawl by Andrea Mowry, which was knit by Andrea in some really, really nice luxury yarns that I knew didn't really fit the budget that I wanted to spend on that project. In kind of thinking about what I did and how happy I was with that finished project, I was so inspired to talk to y'all about kind of knitting within your own budget, knitting within my budget. So when I started thinking about this, I knew that I had to reach out to the best resource I know, Allie Cat Knits from Instagram. Y'all know Allie from my previous video, The Expert Tips for Sweater Knitters. She is the creator of the Alternative Kits for Popular Knits series on Instagram. I reached out to her and she sent me some amazing video that I'm gonna share with y'all. I'm also gonna talk about my project, my thought process. So if you're interested in that, don't go anywhere. So before we jump in, I just wanted to remind you that on this channel, we talk about knitting, sometimes crochet, all things yarn related. And if that interests you, hit that little subscribe button down below and the little bell to get notifications when I post new content. Also, if you're enjoying this video and you're getting some value out of it, hit that little like button down below. Both of these things really help me out to grow my channel. I've been so excited to start this journey with y'all and have been so excited that so many of you have come along with me and I would love if more people joined us. Subscribing and liking helps me reach more people so we can talk about more knitting and yarn things with more people. So in this video, we're really going to cover three main things. First, I'm just going to chat with you about the things that help guide me to the path that I ultimately take with my yarn choice and where the project is going. Second, we're going to talk to Allie. Well, Allie's going to teach us how she comes up with really successful substitutions for more budget-friendly yarns when she's planning a project and when she's putting together her alternative kits for popular knits. And lastly, I'm gonna show you my recent finished object, the Satellite Shawl. If you follow me on Instagram at Drowning in Yarn, you've seen it, but it's worth talking about. I love that pattern and I love the yarn choices that I made and how it came out. So I cannot wait to show it to you a little bit more in depth. So when I start a project, unless I'm using some yarn that I already have in my stash, I have to first think about kind of what my budget is. The things that I think about, I think are applicable to everybody, whether you're knitting on a budget because you cannot afford the yarn stuff the designer may have used or the project that kind of inspired you used or whether you just choose not to use those yarns. Some of these yarns, even if you can't afford $200 on a shawl, that might seem insane. I have never walked into a store and purchased a shawl for $200 or any amount less. And I'm not gonna buy yarn to make a shawl for $200. Like, I'm just not gonna do it. So when I see a shawl that I like, I may really wanna knit it because of the process. And I wear it because it's now special to me and I've learned to love them since I started knitting them but I need to think about a realistic dollar amount for me. So I know I said I think about these things whenever I'm not using yarn in my stash, but I do try to always use at least one thing from my stash. So my like kind of rule of thumb for myself is always like pull something from the stash. If it's a project that uses multiple yarns, I did not do that with this latest shawl that I'm gonna show you in a little bit, but generally speaking, I will try to use up some scraps or if there's color work, try to incorporate something. It just makes me feel a little bit better about the fact that I'm like hoarding yarn. It makes me feel less guilty the next time that I kind of make a stash acquisition. I think that that's the most effective way to reduce the current spend on a project, but it is kind of hard if you have like a certain thing in mind. And that's what happened with the satellite shawl. I knew how I wanted it to come out and there was nothing that I had that was gonna do that. So I definitely had to purchase all the yarns for my satellite shawl that I'll show you in a little bit in order to make it. So then the second thing that I think about after I think about whether, you know, I have yarn in my stash that I can use, maybe for the whole project, I do have sweater quantities that I could use and plan to use soon. But the second thing I think about is what is my budget for the yarn that I do need to purchase in order to make a particular project? Oftentimes this question can get a little bit scary if you have something really specific in mind. I'm thinking of my Cozy Classic Raglan that I've yet to finish, 
but I needed a whole sweater's quantity of fingering weight yarn, and I knew I wanted to do hand-dyed fingering weight yarn. Luckily, I did have all that in my stash, but I knew that I wanted to also use mohair. So now I was looking at buying essentially two sweaters quantities of yarn. I had to have a sweater quantity of sock yarn, and I had to have a sweater quantity of mohair. And so for that project, I had to really think about how I could get that mohair at something that was more economical <laughs> for me, because a sweater quantity of hand-dyed, you know, mohair or whatever, is going to be cost prohibitive. It's going to make that sweater be a $200 sweater again. So I had to really think about like how much did I actually want to spend and then use that as my guiding principle whenever I was searching for yarn. Now for that, I was able to find mohair that did exactly what I wanted it to do. I was able to get yarn that exactly matched what Jesse May used in samples for the Cozy Classic Rag. And I was able to use sock yarn and hold a double with mohair. That was easy because I did use knit picks a lot and I pulled sock yarns from my stash. So I didn't spend all that money all at once, but oftentimes I have to think about, do I want my project to match exactly what the samples are? Or do I want something a little bit different? And can I afford the yarns that were used to design the project or that some sample that I saw that inspired me was knit in? For my satellite shawl, as I'll show you later, the answer to that question, to that second question, can I afford those yarns that the sample was in was sort of, but I didn't want to. My budget wasn't $200, which is how much it would have cost. So I had to start thinking about what are yarns that will work for that result I wanted, which, for me, my like golden rule, if I'm trying to get as close as possible, is yards per gram and same or similar fiber. So like, can I find a yarn with the same or similar fiber content with a similar yards per gram? That will get me somewhere very close. So a substitution should, in theory, be successful. But I think that's like the easiest thing you can do if you can't justify or can't make that like cash outlay for those yarns that the designer used. So then the second thing is if you can't find yarns that are similar, which sometimes you can't, like if you are on a tight budget for whatever reason and everything is using like melted baby Surrey, like you're not gonna find that for cheap. You're gonna have to find something similar. So you might need to, at that point, substitute for something a little bit different. And then you just really wanna think about like how the fiber is gonna behave. Like you don't wanna substitute alpaca for cashmere even though it's super soft if you're trying to make a hundred percent alpaca sweater like it's just not going to work right like it's not going to work the same it's going to lose shape it's not going to drape the same so those kinds of things are what i sort of think about i have been fortunate enough that if i really want something similar the projects that i've chosen and the budget that i have i'm able to find things that are very similar to what the designer used i don't often knit in the exact yarns i'm trying to think if i've ever really maybe a couple times use the exact yarns that a project was designed in, but I've been fortunate that I could find yarns that were in my budget that were similar enough that I was able to get a project that was very similar. Often whenever I have made a project that differs in some way, it's like a conscious choice. So the last thing that I think about is always, am I able to support my local yarn store whenever I'm planning? I'm talking about the local small business, like I know the owner's yarn store that's down the street and I always want to try to buy at least something. It doesn't always happen, but if I can, then I want to. If they have something that works and my budget allows for it, then it's to my benefit to have them down the street because I like them and I want them to stay in business and have livelihoods but also just because, you know, it's just nice to know that I have this resource for knowledge and and have small businesses in my community. It makes me feel like part of something and like makes me feel like I belong to a community and not just like live on a street somewhere. So I always try to buy something there if I can. So that's kind of the third thing that I think about. And that leads me really well into Allie's advice. Allie is amazing. If you don't follow her on Instagram, go over there and do it now. She makes these posts called alternative kits for popular knits where she takes really popular designs from like Andrea Mowry, Caitlin Hunter, other people, and she puts together like lists of yarn that would make really successful substitutions and then writes down like cost information and everything. So 
I know that a lot of us know what we're doing and know what a good substitution would be, but for so many people, whether it's because you're new or you haven't had access to a local yarn store where you could feel everything and you're only buying yarn online or whatever the case, there are a lot of people that don't really know what properties of yarn would make one yarn better than another for a certain project, etc. And Ali is able to do this because she is an amazing knitter. She's an amazing designer. Y'all will see her beautiful pixelated hat on top of her head while she is talking to you. And it's available in Ravelry. It's gorgeous. She is just an expert. And so having somebody do that is so amazing for those people that can't or don't yet have the tools to do that for themselves. So I'm just gonna kick it over to Ali. Enjoy. Hi everyone, my name's Ali. You can find me on Instagram at Ali Katnitz. And I'm here to talk to you a little bit about my favorite ways to find budget-friendly options for knitting. So the first thing that I think is super important when it comes to knitting on a budget is just to recognize that you can knit with whatever you want and you can make it look great. I personally love finding budget-friendly options for projects that I see on Ravelry that are knit by even the most popular of designers. You can find great alternatives and have a beautiful project regardless of how expensive the yarn is. So my first recommendation would be to familiarize yourself with brands that fit in your budget. When I see a new pattern that comes up on Ravelry, I immediately have a little list tucked in the back of my head of really great alternative options that might have a yarn that I could substitute. Some of my favorite budget-friendly yarn brands include Valley Yarns, which is Webb's Yarns in-house brand, and it's amazing. They have so many different yarns, so many different fibers, and they're great, great, great alternatives for sweater quantities or if you want to make a shawl. It's amazing. I love Valley Yarn. Cascade Yarns, Barocco, Malabrigo Rios is even a great choice for a worsted weight alternative. Knitpicks.com has great choices. There are so many websites that you can find wonderful alternatives to more expensive yarns. All you have to do is do a little digging. Let me show you some of these websites and what I do to spark inspiration and find the perfect yarn. Ravelry is the perfect place to start, and The Weekender by Andrea Maury is a great example to use. It's a super popular sweater that has been knit in so many different yarns. We all know the pattern page is going to give you a lot of information. Particularly what we're interested in here is the type of yarn that Andrea used to make her sweater. She used Brooklyn Tweed Shelter, which is a really nice yarn that retails for about $14 and you get 140 yards per skein. This is yarnsub.com, one of my favorite websites. You type in the yarn that you want to substitute. So for the weekender, we typed in Brooklyn Tweed Shelter, and you will get a list of suggested substitutes based on the type of fiber, cost, etc. It is awesome. After I have found a yarn that I want to potentially knit my project with, I'll go to the Yarn Ideas tab on the pattern page and see if I can find the yarn. A bunch of people have knit with this specific yarn brand, and you could spend hours scrolling through all of these beautiful projects. Another example is Cascade Yarns, an affordable brand that over 100 people have used to knit the Weekender. You can scroll through, you can look at the different colors, you can see if people wrote any notes, and there's really no end to the resources that you can find. Knit Picks is another affordable brand, and there are some beautiful projects here as well. I couldn't leave without giving a shout out to my favorite yarn store, Webs. Webs is based out of Northampton, Mass. It's enormous and has a ton of stock of yarn. On top of everything that they have, they also offer their own in-house brand. Valley Yarn is super affordable and there's almost 50 different yarns to choose from. And as if I didn't love Webs enough, they also offer a discount, 20% off $60 and 25% off $120. I swear I'm not sponsored, I just love a good deal. So let's say I wanna see if Northampton would be a good choice for my weekender sweater. Northampton is a worsted weight yarn. It is $6.99 for 247 yards and comes in a ton of colors. It also is discountable on yarn.com. 
I like to go to Ravelry and use the Yarns tab to search for the yarn that I might want to use. When I find the yarn that I'm looking for, I click on this projects link and this will take you to a page that will show you the yarn knit up in all different kinds of projects in all different colors that it comes in. It's super helpful to see the yarn knit up and it's really nice to help you decide which color you want to use. The pattern ideas tab is a really great option if you want some pattern suggestions and ironically enough, the weekender is the top suggestion for this yarn. The search bar is another great tool to use to see if someone has used the specific yarn you're searching for with the pattern that you want to use it for. I also am obsessed with this colorways tab. If you go to the colorways tab and click on the projects link under whichever color you're thinking about using, you can see it knit up. It might not be knit up in the exact project that you want it to be, but it's still nice to see the yarn knit up nonetheless. The bottom line is the yarn ideas tab and the projects tabs on your pattern pages on Ravelry are your best friend. Use them, scour them, read notes, look at the colors people use, and ultimately let it be your inspiration and your guide for picking your yarn. Ali, thank you so much. Those tips were amazing. I know that I got so much out of that and I hope that all of you watching did as well. Ali went above and beyond and that's gonna help so many people, I think, to make really good substitutions if they haven't had the courage or the knowledge to do that in the past. So Ali wanted me to let you know that she forgot to mention that Drops is one of her favorite brands for budget yarns. And that leads me to my finished object that I wanna show you all, the satellite shawl. It's probably the nicest thing that I've ever made. It is a garter stitch and brioche shawl. It's my first brioche project that wasn't just a hat. It feels in these yarns so much more expensive than it ended up being. Now, the reason that I said one of Ali's favorites being Drops led me into this was that I did use Drops brushed alpaca silk in the shawl. It uses three skeins as written of Surrey yarn, Surrey alpaca yarn. So I ended up with two skeins of Odang from Farmer's Daughter, and then I used one skein of Drops Brushed Alpaca Silk. So then for the main colors, I ended up using Holstgarn. The pattern is written for lace weight yarn. I knew that I wanted to kind of stick with like two lace weight strands the way that Andrea Maori did, because I kind of like whenever you have multiple strands, I just feel like it gives it a squishiness that you, do, you don't necessarily get whenever you have just a string, single strand of yarn. Like if I went with just a single strand uh, fingering weight yarn. You all know that I love Holskarn for really affordable yarns and I wanted to try their Noble yarn which is 5% cashmere which <laughs> you can't go wrong with cashmere and 95% Geelong. Now Geelong is apparently from the Merino sheet but it has a shorter staple length and from what I can tell from my like minimal research on this shorter staple length equals softer wool. So this brown color in my shawl is the Holstgarn Noble and then I held that very thin fingering weight strand with a strand of their Titicaca yarn, which is 100% alpaca. Holding the super light fingering with this very thin strand of 100% alpaca equaled about what two strands of lace weight or a strand of fingering weight yarn would be. The drops brushed alpaca silk, very similar to Surrey, so I used that. And the two skeins of Farmer's Daughter Odang are baby alpaca Surrey yarn. They're so gorgeous. I went with them because I love the colors. I love the depth of shade that it brings. You'll notice that the gray from the drops brushed up of silk is a lot more even and a lot kind of flatter of a color. I think it's beautiful. And if you wanted to make this shawl on a tighter budget, using the brushed up of silk would make a gorgeous shawl. It's very soft, but I do think that I can see why the brush Surrey costs more. It is just a little bit more luxurious. It's a little bit softer. That hand dyed color is beyond words, it's gorgeous. And it brought some a little bit extra to the shawl that I don't think I would have gotten necessarily had I just stuck with the brushed alpaca silk. And that was something that did fit within my budget, so I went ahead and made that choice to use those. And I could not possibly be happier with this shawl. It feels like a million dollars, but it did not cost a million dollars. So first I'll just tell you how much the shawl as knit by Andrea Mowry cost. So her shawl used 
five skeins of yarn, two skeins of the lace weight, and three skeins of the Surrey. In each one of those skeins, I found them at varying yarn stores for $38.95 a piece. So five skeins at $38.95, smally, adds up to $194.75, and that's before you pay for shipping. So that was just not within the budget that I wanted to spend. But with the yarn choices that I ended up making, I was able to make this shawl for $98.30. If I had gone with all drops brushed out pack of silk, I could have made it for just over $50, $50 and some change. And I think it would have still felt like you paid well over $100 for it. So for my main color, I ended up using about 650 yards of Noble and about 610 yards of the Titicaca yarn. And those were, for the Noble, $9.85. So I ended up using one ball in almost all of a second at $9.85. Then for the Titicaca, that was just over $7 a ball. I used one ball and then broke a little bit into a second, also from the yarnery. For the Odang Surrey from Farmer's Daughter, those were each $28, so I had two of those, and I got those from Knit One Chicago, my local yarn store. For Drops Brushed Out Pack of Silk, I used one plus a little bit of a second ball, and those were $3.95 each. I did get those from Amazon. I know there are other places that sell drops and sell it for just as good of a price and with better shipping, because it took like weeks for me to get it. So I'd probably do a little bit of research on where to get that so that you have a more reliable source uh, to get that yarn from because it took a long time. So that's really all I have for y'all today. I hope you've enjoyed this episode and you've gotten a lot out of it. I know that I did in recording it and thinking through all of these things and reaching out to Allie. She's such an amazing source of information. If you're not following her on Instagram, you have to go do that. Leave a comment down below. I would love to know what your favorite budget yarn choices are or even what your most like proud moment is with regard to some yarn substitutions that you've made, some really successful substitutions that you've made for either budgetary purposes or for whatever other choice, if it was aesthetic or whatever. And if you want to stick around in the future for more yarny talk and knitting talk, definitely hit that subscribe button and the little bell to get notifications when I post new content. Until the next time that we talk, enjoy your holiday season, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and I will see you later.